Hi everyone, it's Alyssa and welcome to You Can Learn Math. Today we're talking about the standard formula for a circle. Now it's going to look a little strange and <laughs> I promise it's really not that bad. What gets bad is when they start throwing the wrench in the works and trying to make things a little bit more difficult on you because of course they are. Of course they're going to do that. So today, the three big things we're going to talk about are what is the standard formula for a circle? What do the parts in it mean? How do I write the standard formula if I am given a, a center point and a radius? And how do I change a long string of terms into the standard equation? How do I convert it? So here's our first one. We're going to start with just what is the standard formula for a circle? And don't be afraid. I know it looks a little strange. There's a lot of variables in it, but I promise it's not as crazy as it looks. So the standard is X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. In this case, H and K are the coordinates for the center of the circle. They are the center. And R is the radius. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Now notice here, this is the one thing that can kind of throw people off is that this is minus H and minus K, but here we have positive H and positive K. So it is going to be the opposite of what you see in that standard equation is the center. And I think this is easier to see and kind of get a feel for in a graphing calculator situation since we can kind of adjust things very quickly. And I'll be honest, I'm not great at drawing perfect circles. Pretty terrible, actually. So we're going to hop over to Desmos's graphing, graphing calculator so I can show you how this works. So now we are magically over at Desmos. And I've already put in the basic standard formula for a circle x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. Well, let's start with the most basic form of this. What if I had a circle where its center was the origin? Right here at 0, 0. Well, I'm going to plug those in. x minus 0 and y minus 0. So that's my center at 0. And how big of a radius do I want? Let's say the radius is 2. Well, 2 squared is 4, and there we go. We've drawn our first circle. It's centered at the origin. We put in 0 and 0 for h and k, those x and y coordinates. And we've also put in 4 for the r squared, and sure enough, there's our radius of 2 all the way around. Now, you may notice there would be another way to write this because x minus 0 is just x, and y minus 0 is just y, so it could be also written as x squared plus y squared, my cursor is getting in the way of me seeing things, equals 4. And look, it's drawn it right over top of it. And a lot of math books will start you with this. They'll start you with the x squared plus y squared equals a number, and then they start throwing in the coordinates in the center. Woo! And it's always, again, the opposite. So, for instance, if I wanted to move this, uh, this circle 2 to the right, I wanted to shift it on the x 2 to the right, that'd be putting it at positive 2. So I need to put the opposite here. It needs to be x minus 2. And there it goes, 2 to the right. If I want it to go 2 up, let's say 3 up. Ooh, let's get crazy. 3 up, <laughs> that's a positive 3 because I'm going up on the y-axis. So I need to do the opposite. I need to do negative 3. And there it is. All right, so let's say I was given this problem. The center is 7, negative 3 with a radius of 6. So I'm just going to get rid of these and we're going to fill things in manually here. So the center is 7, negative 3. My x needs to be positive 7. So I'm going to fill in the opposite of that. That is negative 7. My y coordinate needs to be negative 3. The opposite of that would be positive 3. And the radius is 6. 6 squared or 6 times 6 is 36. And sure enough, 
Let's put a little dot there just so we can see it. 7, negative 3. There it is for the center. 7, negative 3. And we can see our radius is 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All the way around. So far, so easy, right? You knew it's not going to last though, right? <laughs> you knew this. I mean, I know I hinted at the beginning, but your experience at math, in math at this point in your mathematical career should have gotten you used to the fact that there's always <laughs> going to be a twist or a harder problem. So let's jump back to the uh, whiteboard and we'll deal with that harder problem. Okay, now we're magically back at the whiteboard. It's like we're teleporting. So here we have our standard equation. You go, okay, what are they going to do? What's going to make this more difficult? Erase, erase, erase. So here's what's going to happen. They are going to give you a whole string of variables and terms and ask you to get it back into this format. So here's an example. x squared minus 4x plus 14y plus y squared plus 32 equals 4. And they say, I want you to convert this back into this standard form. Now the big thing you need to do for this, I'm going to warn you right now. So if you need to go refresh yourself on this concept, I have a link below. You can just click down there and it will help you. It is completing the square. This is one of those skills. I, I cannot remember a time when a student, when I've mentioned completing the square, has said, oh yeah, I remember that. It's one of those skills that the majority of students learn it pretty early on in algebra when they're doing factoring, you know, all the quadratic equation, all that good stuff. And then it's just, whoop, it's gone because they don't use it that much. And there's a whole lot of other stuff with factoring that they use more. It's very, very common. So if right now you're going completing the square, what was that? You're not alone, but you got to go back and refresh yourself. It keeps rearing its ugly head in algebra. It just does. And no one seems to warn students about that, that they need to remember this for ages because it just keeps coming back. So again, if this does not sound familiar to you, or if when I start doing this, it does not immediately come back to you, please, please, please go watch um, a video on it. Again, I have a link on the video, a video link in the description below that will walk you through this and bring you back to speed on completing the square. All right, so first step, and now I'm assuming that you all know what completing the square is. You wouldn't watch that video, right? 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 Okay, so first step here, you're going to get any numbers that are all by themselves over to the other side. You're going to get them all on one side and you're going to have all of the X's and Y's on the other side. So that's step one. So the only one I'm looking through, the only one that I have, it's a plain number is that 32. So I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides that gets rid of it on the left and essentially moves it to the right. And I have left on the left side. I have left on the left side. That's good English, isn't it? x squared minus 4x plus 14y plus y squared equals 4 minus 32 or negative 28. Now any of you astute mathematicians out there might look and say, but it needs to be a radius squared and it's negative. This cannot be. We cannot have a square that is negative. I say, hold your horses, mathematicians. All will be revealed. Next step, we want to make sure that our x's and our y's are together and we're going to put them in this sort of standard descending order. And also in this step, I'm going to leave some spaces here and you're going to see where that is. So first I have my X squared and my four X together and I'm going to leave a little space. Then I've got a Y squared. I'm going to put it first and then the 14 Y. Then I'm going to leave another little space equals negative 28. Now I am ready to complete the square and I have to do it twice, two times. So if you, if you are not solid on this concept, I cannot stress it enough, it's going to cause problems. So the first completing the square is here. The second is here. Again, I'm going to tell you the method, but I'm not walking through the why. That's for another video for the completing the square. So our process for completing the square, we take this negative four, we divide it by two, get our negative two, 
and then we square that to get our plus 4. Over here on the 14, the positive 14, same thing. We divide it by 2, we get 7, then we square that, and we get positive 49. Now here's a step that a lot of students miss, and it is crucial. You will get it wrong if you do not do this. You can't just add these numbers willy-nilly. You have to keep in mind this is an equation. It has to stay balanced. So we've added 4 and we've added 49 to the left. So what do we need to do? Yes, I can almost hear you yelling at it, yelling it at me through the computer screen. Yes, I need to add it to the right-hand side as well. You need to add 4 and add 49. Anything you do to the left, you have to do to the right side of the equation. They have to stay balanced. Hmm. I just whacked my microphone. I really hope that didn't hurt your ears. Sorry about that. So now I'm going to tidy up the left side and the right side. I have my first completed square, x squared minus 4x plus 4. When I am writing it in its perfect square form, I always use the number I got when I divide it by 2. So this is x minus 2 squared. And then I have my y squared plus 14y plus 49, perfect square. I use the number that I got when I divide it by 2. So it's y plus 7 squared. On the right hand side, negative 28 plus 4 is negative 24, and negative 24 plus 49 is positive 25. See, I told you to be positive. Have no faith in me. There we have it. It's in standard form. A lot of math problems will stop at this point now that you've put it in standard form. Some will ask you to go the next step and tell them what the uh, center and radius of this circle is now that you've put it in standard form. But that's like the easiest, least difficult part of this process, right? Of course it is. Because we know that all we need to do is take the opposite of these two numbers. So our center is the opposite of negative 2 or positive 2, the opposite of positive 7, negative 7, and our radius is the square root of this number since the number on the side is the radius squared. The square root of 25 is 5. So this is the equation for a circle that has a center at 2, negative 7, and the radius is 5. I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if it was helpful, useful in any way, please like, share, subscribe. You know the drill. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a great day. See you later. Bye.